How well do you know your God? How well do you know your God? Father God, we ask your hand of mercy and grace upon this time in your word for your glory, the much needed good of your people and for the encouragement of those gospel warriors in Jesus name. Amen and amen. I'd like to continue with our series on you too can slay a giant. One of the things that I fear is that we live in a day where when we read the the accounts of scripture, we don't believe that that is us. Well, let me tell you, when you read the account of scripture, God is still doing great things in a great people. When we read the accounts of scripture of people like Esther, like Joseph, like Daniel, like David, we need to set our sights on seeing how God can do that in our life. Now, of course, in saying that, we realize that this, like Daniel, just using him as an example, he had a prayer life where he was since younger days praying three times a day. It wasn't for many, many years, many, many years that 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 prayer life, that life of spiritual discipline revealed itself at some of the most critical points of Israel's history. So I would encourage all of us to be faithful behind the scenes, faithful behind the scenes in first of all, our own personal walk with God, in our prayer life, in our Bible reading, in our meditation, because we never know when the time will come, when God will use us, when God may call upon us to carry out a great exploit for his kingdom. I do want to say the verse we're going to look at today is in the book of Daniel. Should I say the gospel of Daniel? Amen. The whole Bible is the gospel. The book of Daniel, the gospel of Daniel, chapter 11, verse 32. You see, I started off with the question, how well do you know your God? God has not given us the spirit of fear. Oh, let me, let me, let me be careful here. God has not given us the spirit of fear. I am about to say something that I know will make people uncomfortable and fearful. Uh, but I have to say this because if we're going to admire David, we need to understand, understand the spirit. We need to understand the spirit that resided in the heart of our brother David. Yes, David is about to go and face this, this mammoth, this behemoth, this giant of a man named Goliath. The entire nation is petrified. King Saul has won a battle or two. But he's petrified. David's brothers is, are petrified. The whole Israeli army is petrified. But David is confident that he, through the power of the God of Israel, can slay Goliath. Let me tell you something. We need that spirit in our day. If you read magazines about persecuted individuals, you will see there are people of all ages that are willing to be dismembered, have their hand or foot covered off, willing to be decapitated, imprisoned, beaten, all in the name of the gospel. We could see in our country that this spirit of boldness has, has, has departed. It is not in great measure here. I can say this with authority. However, we want to jazz this up however we want to use uh, biblical semantics to justify when the 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 house of god which is the pillar of ground of truth the pillar and ground of truth closes down for 15 months because of a virus or a flu we realize that we have we have forgotten the words of Jesus where if any man seek to save his life he will lose it so we have convinced ourselves that just going to church a little bible here and there maybe a little extra zoom bible that we are doing our biblical duty but David understood that sometimes we have to take our life in hand. I do not think it was such a major Herculean heroic act to go to church during the pandemic. But again, each one has to figure them out for themselves. What do I mean when I say that? Philippians chapter 2. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Some people feel it's okay to go to church 
even though they may lose their right arm or their left leg. Some people believe in other nations. It's okay to assemble with the saints, knowing that at any moment a bomb could be dropped on them. And then we know there are some who believe that, hey, I may get sick. I might even die. I need to stay home for a few months. I said it. I'm not apologizing for it. But let us all work out our own salvation with fear and trembling. And no, I am not talking about to the, I'll tell you who I'm, I'm talking to the people who went to Walmart, who went to Target, who even went to restaurants once they opened, but remained, remained at home on a Sunday morning. That's who I'm talking to. But I want to get back to our brother David. But I say this because in Daniel chapter 11, verse 32, those who do wickedly against the covenant, he shall corrupt with flattery. The gospel of Daniel chapter 11, verse 32, those who do wickedly against the covenant, he shall corrupt with flattery. But the people who know their God shall be strong and carry out great exploits. Let me encourage you in this. Put your mind in the word of God and it will fill you with a boldness and a courage. It will fill you with a certainty and a steadfastness of spirit that when the lions and the bears come, you will not find yourself shrinking back. Oh, amen. Amen. You will not find yourself shrinking back. I want to encourage you in this. We have this new phenomenon where people go on Ancestry.com. I am not knocking that at all. I have nothing against it at all. But they want to know where they're from. I just want to encourage you in this. David knew where he was from. He knew he was a son of Jesse. Amen? David knew he had a brother Shema and Abinadab. David knew where he was from, but being, but knowing where he was from was not what motivated him. He ultimately knew he was a descendant of the living God. He knew that God had had his hand upon him. Let me encourage you, our ethnic, our national, our geographical origin will not give us the faith. It will not give us the courage. It will not give us the spiritual fortitude that can only be found when a person is confident that their life is in the hand of the living God. And whether it's pandemic or Goliath, they can walk into the face of it without shrinking back, without blinking an eye, realizing if I perish, I perish. You know that little Jewish girl Esther said that if I perish, I perish. You too could slay a giant. I want to encourage you in this. Surround yourself with people who are not shrinking back in this day of a virus. Look for people who have a boldness, who have a bravery, who have a courage about what God can do in their life. Amen. About what God could do in their life. And understand this, I'm not telling you, you must go overseas. David did not go overseas, but David slew the Goliath in his nation, in his community. Trust me, in America, there are Goliaths that need to be slain. But David was not one to wait for King Saul. If you have your hope in Joe Biden or Donald Trump, you're misguided. Let me say that again. If you have your hope in Donald Trump, in Joe Biden, in the Senate, you are misguided. You do not know your God. David had a king. David had a king that was clearly appointed by God for a season. But David understood, even if the king does not go into this battle, I can, what happens, let me, let me explain the psychological dilemma we have. We have this social media religion. We post things and we think we've done something for God. I, I simply seek to encourage saints, but this business of waiting on the government to change our society is utter nonsense. David did not wait for King Saul. David did not wait for an Israeli army. David did not wait for his brothers to fight a battle that he himself could fight. And yes, David was an ordinary fellow. He was what? A sheep herder. He took care of sheep.
But let me explain also, because David was faithful in taking care of a sheep, because David was faithful in, in risking his life for the lion and the bear, when the time came to faith, face Goliath, he already knew what God could do in his life. Jesus says to pray an hour. I cannot encourage you enough. It is, I know you're saying, Pastor John, when this is where, when will you get off of that? Jesus says, can't you watch one hour? Let me rephrase it. You can almost hear Jesus saying it this way. Can't you what, watch one hour? Do you think you have enough boldness and courage right now to take on Goliath? Do you think you have all the bravery that's needed to take on whatever giant is facing the nation? See, prayer is where we get our energy, our spiritual effort, where we get the, the spiritual desire, where we get the spiritual power to accomplish great exploits. We have to know our God. Oh yes, going to church does not mean I know God. Shouting does not mean I know God. Dancing does not mean I know God. Speaking in tongues does not mean I know God. Amen. The people who know their God, they carry out great exploits. Many of us are very bold in the sanctuary. But when it comes to speaking out against the evils of our society, whether it be homosexuality, whether it be transgender, whether it be, whether it be the hypocrisy of racism in the church, many of us will not speak about these matters. We, we're trying to appeal to the masses. David understood his brother thought he was arrogant when he was slaying Goliath. I can sense that we live in a day that we are so busy being politically correct will never slay a giant. Slaying a giant means that you may offend your brothers. The very people who are closest to you and your family, you may offend them. And by the way, nobody asked David to go slay the giant. David saw a cause. He saw an adversary and he took it upon himself to do it. This is where we are. We need, to, I, I pray that this would encourage us to become a people that we are not waiting on the government. We're not waiting on the family. Lord have mercy. We're not waiting on the pastor or the deacon. That we ourselves, amen. David could have remained with the sheep. David was sent on a simple errand to take some food to his brothers. But David, in doing that, saw a cause. He saw an adversary of the people of God. He was sent on one mission, but took it upon himself to go upon a greater mission. Amen. The word is initiative. Many of us, we like to sit back and we, we do a little bit. We'll keep some sheep, but we don't want to go beyond that. Amen. We don't want to go beyond keeping sheep. May God teaches what it means to know him at least at the bare minimum if we're not praying an hour we're not going to know god now jesus says can you watch one hour if we're going to slay giants we need to slay the giant of procrastination oh yes the giant of spiritual laziness amen the the giant of a lack of spiritual discipline we can write but to actually sit and pray for one hour with the living god Amen. To, and, but I'm telling you, you too can slay a giant. Nobody knew David could slay a giant. Nobody knew Esther was going to deliver Israel. That's you. I'm talking to you. I'm talking to you this morning. I'm talking to you. Just because you don't see it, you don't know who you are until the opportunity arises. David did not know he would slay Goliath, but when he saw Goliath, he knew he could slay Goliath. So the Lord is hopefully preparing some of us to carry out great exploits for this God. I'm trying to encourage you that don't don't look at your pastor. Don't 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 just model your life after him. Look at Daniel. Yes, I pastor your church, but I'm looking at Daniel. I'm not looking just to other pastors. You can learn from them, but you look at Daniel, you look at Esther, you look at Joseph, you look at Paul, you look at Jesus. And I, I don't even 
only reason I don't use Jesus is because we know he's the son of God. But I, 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 clearly he is the ultimate example. But I want to demonstrate to you that David just keeping sheep. Faithfulness in small areas. What does Jesus say? You've been faithful in little. I will make you ruler over much. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. You too could slay a giant. Let me tell you, your family heritage. He was a son of Jesse. He had brothers. His king was Saul, but he understood. He understood God had a different call on his life. Do not rely on your mother, your father, or your country's religion. Rely on the religion that is found through the living Christ in the living word given by the living spirit. In Jesus' name, go slay a giant. Amen and amen.